Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I have a very quick video session to create a playbook to email when an Azure Sentinel incident is created. As you can see here, just four, four or five very quick steps. Basically, you create a playbook with an incident trigger. You enable system assign identity to that playbook, mainly because I don't want to be using my username and password. You modify the created playbook to add a send an email v2 action, which is another connector to one to, to send that email. Um, you attach that playbook to one of those alerts that we will manually generate and uh, off you go. So, yep, so let's go into the uh, demo. I've opened up my uh, Azure portal screen and this is basically, as you can see here, I go into Azure Sentinel. I already have an Azure Sentinel instance created in a particular workspace called All-in-One Workspace. Um, I've then gone in and gone in and added a data connector, an Azure Defender data connector. This will basically help with importing any alerts that generate in Security Center into Azure Sentinel. I need to do this, so I will assign that playbook to that particular alert. So that will be triggered when I run this sample alerts from Security Center. You will come to know all this very shortly in the demo. So to get started, we click on the automation account here. You go in and say create and say playbook with incident trigger. Microsoft recommends to use playbook with incident trigger over the alert trigger, mainly because the incident trigger get, has all the components that the alert trigger has. Plus Microsoft recommends this as the best approach from moving forward. Once you click on um, playbook with incident trigger, it's going to ask you where do you want to create? This is my resource group. I'm going to give it a name, which is demo incident playbook new. Um, you can enable the diagnostics into logins if you require. I'm not too worried about it. Go into connections. I will basically, as mentioned in the particular instructions, I will be assigning a system uh, assigned identity to it later on, uh, which we will see as we keep moving. So keep continuing, click on continue, create and continue designer. As you can see, it's starting to initialize deployment. It will create this playbook. Might take a couple of uh, minutes. I will pause the recording for now and uh, start it once that's complete. Okay, so now that is complete. As you can see, it's complete now. And this is my playbook. If I go into my Logic App Designer, I can see um, that the default incident trigger is being created. Uh, as mentioned, the second step is to create a managed identity. The reason why I'm doing a managed identity is because I don't want to be using my username and password every time this playbook is being triggered. As you can see, I've already created it. I will go ahead and give it a role. The role that you are going to be assigning it is the Azure Sentinel automation contributor role. It goes to that resource group, which is the resource group that this is residing on. And if you just type Azure Sentinel automation contributor role, click on save. Once that's done, beautiful. Once that's done, we go back to the designer here. You've created the designer, you click on the rule and you change the connection here click on add new. It's going to have two options here. You would want to use the manage identity one. This is the Microsoft preferred way of doing things over a service principle, mainly because the moment you create a managed identity, it sticks with this particular resource. And anytime this resource gets deleted, this managed identity gets deleted along with it. Unlike a service principle where you would have the issues of um, rotating these, uh, rotating these secrets, making sure that it is presided somewhere safely in the key vault, making sure once your resource is deleted to go ahead and then manually delete the service principle. All that saga is no longer there with managed identity. So you would want to basically create, uh, connect with managed identity. It's going to give ask for a name. Just give it. I'm just going to give it the same name here. Demo incident managed identity 
AK and then just create. Once that's done, I am then going to create create two more things, which is okay, so I'll just talk while I do it then, nice and easy. My new step here is basically to create a variable. Why am I doing it? Because the way the it's been structured right now is the moment you send an email immediately after the incident is triggered, if you have got any HTML formatting in that email, it will no longer be visible, which means the email is going to come, come out as saying, you've got an alert, um, do you want to actually, it's not going to give you any good information or there's not going to be any HTML formatting. If you want to do that, you will have to insert variables, which is what I'm doing. Very simple, the description of these variables and what I'm doing these variables will be in the, uh, in the link below as well. So what I go is variables, I click on the variables and you just go and say initialize variable. Give it a name like email body, and the type as string and leave the value as empty. Go to new step. Again, you have initialized the variable, you now need to set that variable. Go back to the variable here, email body from above and over here you give this HTML value. Now. I will provide the source of this HTML in the descriptions below, so which makes your life a lot easier. Okay, so I'm just going to go, give me, I'm just going to copy paste this here. So it's fairly simple. I will put this there in the description. All what you need to do is wherever it says alert display name here, just add a dynamic content. So it's going to pick up the display name from that incident that has triggered on top. So add dynamic content, you go in and just say alert display name, there you go. Go back again, incident description, same story. Change that to description. And you have got an incident description there. Severity, the same thing. I'm just going to pause the video while I do the other three, so it makes it much easier because it's fairly straightforward. All right, now as I've already populated everything, I now proceed to the final step, which is to send an email uh, with the body that we have just created here. For that, again, add an action and, I, and just type in Outlook. and just say send an email. So if you just say type send an email, it should come up and this is the version. So now the reason why we did the set variable and the initialize variable is because you can't enable HTML formatting inside the newer version of send an email, which is why we have done the following above. Click on send an email. It's now gonna ask to whom do you want to do it? I will just do it to my test account. Subject or could be something like review, sentinel, alert, and again, always dynamic content, and I'm just going to be putting it as a title, title of the alert. The body will be again the email body from above. Perfect. And that's about it. And finally, we just save this. Cool. So as you can see here now, this has saved. Now the first thing what I would like to do is try to run a trigger. You would always see the first two times you try to do something, it's always going to show us fairly. You just, for sanity purposes, click on run trigger and this should succeed. Successfully checked the trigger. Cool. So what I'm going to do next is I've got this now. I'm going to assign this particular playbook to an alert. So to do that, all what you do is you go into Azure Sentinel, go back to that workspace there, go into analytics, and it's one of those analytic rules. And I have integrated my security center with Sentinel, 
which means an alert that you assign or you generate in the security center will come to Sentinel. I will edit this and it's automated response. Uh, this is an older one. I'm just going to remove that and I'm just going to create the one that we done one. New playbook generation, any name that you want. The main thing is this action here, run a playbook. From here, you select the one that you just created now, which is Demo Incident Playbook New, and click on Apply. Perfect. Next, Review, Save. I'm now, once this is done, the reason with, uh, with incident triggers that we have created right now is we can't manually run it. It is not supported, so we will have to generate sample alerts from the security center which will then be visible in sentinel and the playbook getting triggered and an email sent to my test account so that's what we're going to do now so we're going back to security center going into security alerts going to my sample alerts again just generating a sample alert and i'm going to say create sample alerts. Ideally, let me just duplicate the tag here. I can start hearing my messages now <laughs> in my email. So if you see my security alerts, my solely my security alerts are starting to pop up. This is in my security alerts here. If I go into Sentinel, and I should see the same. incidents because I already have a, an analytic rule to uh, create incidents the moment you have got incidents created in security center it's it's slowly but steadily started assigning all those sample alerts here you can see here I've got all those sample alerts in Sentinel my playbook should now be triggered and should send us an email I'm going and going to check my email to confirm that's the case as you can see, bang, I've got my email here. As you can see, this is my, this one is going to give you an alert name, description, severity, incident, start name, and this is how you can do it. The source code, the HTML source code, I will put in the description below. Thank you so much, guys, for watching, and I hope this is useful. Any questions, please, please feel free to let me know. As usual, please subscribe, because I will be posting videos very often. Thank you very much, and have a great day.